Trouble falling asleep? You know, sometimes at night I see things. God, David. There are a few tried and true remedies I'm sure we've all attempted to help catch those Zs, like a nightcap, or finding the most boring Wikipedia page you can and surfing till you pass out. <laughs> then there's the always there for you midnight snack. But here's the thing, those habits may be causing your insomnia. Who'd you dumb about? I'm Tori, Parade's resident health guru, and the Cleveland Clinic has given me everything I need to give you the scoop on sleep from A to Z. This is the TMI Show. The idea that we all need exactly eight hours of sleep a night is kind of an old wives' tale. Maybe six hours is your ideal. Maybe it's nine. You want to protect your personal sleep quota, however long it is. Oh, sorry, just trying to calculate my PSQ. How do you really figure out how much you need? The standard advice is to set aside several days in a row, like on a vacation, when you can sleep as long as you want without an alarm to wake you up. This way, you can get a ballpark number of hours to shoot for each night. It's not just the quantity of sleep, but the quality of your sleep that's important. Every night, your sleep has stages or cycles. Your deep, restful sleep tends to happen in the first few hours of the night, but decreases during the second half. Then so-called REM sleep, your dreaming sleep, follows as the night goes on. Technically, insomnia is when you have one or more of the following. Difficulty falling asleep. Waking up often during the night and having trouble getting back to sleep. Waking up way too early in the morning or getting sleep that doesn't refresh you. The point is, these all disrupt your natural sleep cycles. <laughs> insomnia is, medically speaking, the worst and can affect not only your moods and alertness, it can be detrimental to your overall health. You gotta get enough sleep to make sure you're staying healthy. Some people with insomnia may have additional medical issues like asthma, depression, cancer, or heartburn that negatively impact sleep. Insomnia can also be worsened by common medications that people take or by using substances like alcohol. I'm gonna work. Need a moment. It's true. Alcohol may be a sedative, but as it metabolizes in your body, the sedative effect wears off. This stops you from getting the deep sleep and REM sleep you need. This means you're likely to wake up easily and more often, especially in the latter half of the night. <laughs> you're more likely to have intense, colorful dreams and nightmares as your sleep patterns ebb and flow. You may or may not remember them, but they can also be lucid or give a feeling of being half awake, half asleep. And guess what? At some points, you might be. Well, I don't even remember getting up. What am I doing? Your sleepwalking, Liz, is a little understood parasomnia disorder. Oh. Oh. She's not sleepwalking. Oh my God, I'm sleep eating. After a night like that, it's highly unlikely you'll be bright eyed in the morning. Simply cutting back or giving up alcohol can be enough to reverse the negative impacts on your sleep and can greatly improve your health overall. Maybe try a trial run where you go completely without and then see how you do on one or two drinks to figure out how much you can handle without sleep disruption. So back in the bottle, the nightcap goes. Well, I guess I can just scroll until I fall asleep, right? Wrong. Screen time and sleep are more connected than you think. First things first, checking your phone keeps your mind psychologically engaged long after you've seen every photo on Instagram or responded to a few dozen work emails. And we all love sending work emails from bed, right? No. Going to bed and falling asleep should be a peaceful, happy, and relaxing experience. Engaging with your phone too close to bedtime can negatively impact those feelings. Plus, the blue light from your phone mimics daylight, literally just the opposite of what you need when you're winding down to hit the hay. Exposure to blue light can affect your internal body clock, also known as your circadian rhythm. That makes you naturally want to sleep at night. You are now completely asleep. If you're a nighttime technology user, it's important to set some ground rules for bedtime. Cut off screen time at least 30 minutes to an hour before bed. Smartphones are the main culprit these days. 
but e-readers and TV also emit that blue light, which can contribute to poor sleep. If you're really struggling with limiting screen time before bed, try putting your phone in a different room and investing in a clock radio for your bedside table. There are also options within your phone, like setting it on night mode to minimize distractions and notifications that can help get you in the mood to snooze. All right, I'm stone sober, phone's in the den, and I still can't go to sleep. What's one little midnight snack gonna hurt? Don't be tempted. Research on circadian rhythm and eating cycles reveals that midnight is actually the worst time to eat even if you think you just need a little something to make yourself more comfortable. A light snack a few hours before bedtime, however, may help you sleep. Have a fiber-rich dessert before the sun sets. For example, a big bowl of berries or a pear. The fiber digests slowly so you feel full longer, and you're less likely to crave something late at night. There are a lot of things you can try on your own to help improve your sleep beyond just limiting these habits. You gotta retrain your brain. Avoid going to bed with a negative mindset, like, if I don't sleep for eight hours, I'll feel terrible tomorrow. Try to go to sleep at the same time each night and get up at the same time each morning. Try not to take naps during the day because naps may make you less sleepy at night. I will begrudgingly admit that that makes sense. Here's a fun one. Make your sleeping place a place of peace and refuge. Make sure your room is dark and quiet. And hey, you get to be Goldilocks here, not too warm or too cold. If light is a problem, try a sleeping mask or blackout curtains. If noise is a problem, try earplugs or a fan. There are plenty of ways to relax before bed, like reading a book, listening to music, taking a bath, or enjoying another activity you find relaxing. Hey, how you doing? While we're on the subject, avoid using your bed for anything other than sleep or sex. If you tend to lie awake worrying about everything, You still awake? Yeah, you. Try making a to-do list before you go to bed. This may help you to not focus on those worries overnight. If you can't fall asleep and don't feel drowsy, get up and read or do something not overly stimulating until you feel sleepy. By the way, stop clock watching. Turn the clock around and only use the alarm. If nothing seems to help, it may be time to talk to your doctor about what's going on. They can help you explore treatment options that can improve your snooze. You can read more about options here at this link. Hope this video didn't put you to sleep. I mean, until later, that is. If you've got any questions about your PSQ or other TMI topics, drop it in the comments or send us an email at tmiquestions at parade.com. Maybe you'll see it answered on the next episode of the TMI show. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.